So let's talk a little bit about oblique asymptotes. So oblique tends to refer to something that's at a slant. So you can imagine these are asymptotes that are not vertical, nor are they horizontal. And just to imagine what this could look like, let's just imagine some type of a function here. I'll draw the axes. So that's my y-axis. This is my x-axis. And let's say you have an oblique asymptote. Let's say it looks something like, let's say it looks something like that. And it's for a function, which I will do in this blue color. So it might do so all sorts of things for small x's, but as x gets larger, it will get closer and closer and closer to that asymptote. And similar on that side, as x gets more and more negative, it might get closer and closer to that asymptote. So that's what we mean by an oblique asymptote. What we're going to do in this video is think about how can we find the equation for that oblique asymptote if we're just given the function. So for example, if our function is, let me do it in this color right here. If our function is, I'll do it in white, f of x is equal to x to the third plus 8x minus 4 over x squared minus x plus 3. When we look at just what's happening in this function, the numerator is going to be growing faster than the denominator when x gets very positive or very negative, because the highest degree term in the numerator is a third degree term, while in the denominator it's only x squared. But the question is, is how is that going to, what line will that potentially approach? And the way to understand that better is we'll do a little bit of algebraic long division to simplify this, and we'll be able to, well not simplify this, to write it differently in a way that we can think about what happens as x gets very positive or very negative. So let's do our algebraic long division. I'm going to divide the denominator into the numerator. I'm really just rewriting the function. So let's see, we'll do, let me do it over here. So x squared minus x plus 3, plus 3, algebraic long division, goes into x to the third. And actually, I'm going to leave a little bit of space because I want a second, I might need a, some space up here for my second degree term. So I'll put plus 8x minus 4. And now let's do it. So look at the highest degree terms. x squared goes into x to the third x times. I'll write that in the x place. x times all of this business. x times x squared is x to the third. x times negative x is negative x squared. x times 3 is 3x plus 3x. And then we're going to want to subtract that. That goes away. You're left with negative of a negative is a positive. Positive x squared, 8x minus 3x is 5x. And then you have minus 4. x squared goes into x squared one time, so plus 1. 1 times all of that is x squared minus x plus 3. Subtract. And then we get, that goes away, 5x minus negative x is going to be 6x. And then negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. And so that's our remainder, because x squared won't go into that more times. And so we can rewrite f of x. We could say that f of x is equal to this, x plus 1 plus 6x minus 7 over x squared minus x plus 3. Now why is this interesting? Well, let's think about what happens when x gets very large or very negative, so or very positive or very negative. As I could write as x approaches positive or negative infinity, our function, our function is approximately, as x becomes very positive or very negative, this denominator grows much faster than that numerator. So this thing, as you get very positive or very negative, is going to go to zero, or it's, well, yes, it's going to go to zero. It's going to become, and it become a lot less consequential than what we see over here. So f of x is going to be approximately x plus 1. So there you have it. We figured out our oblique asymptote in this case. The oblique asymptote is y is equal to x plus 1. And we can actually see that on a graph. I graphed it ahead of time. And let me bring it in right there. And so in this case, situation, our function is in that teal color. That is our f of x. No, let me not, let me make, let me, our function is in that teal color. And you could see it does all this stuff when x is relatively 
small in magnitude, but as it gets larger and larger and larger, or more and more negative, it is approaching y equals x plus one, which is that yellow line, that y equals x plus one right over here, that is that yellow line, which is the oblique asymptote.